Welcome to California Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We are taking it on the road. Today we are in Redding, California. I don't know what to say. This is God's country, simply. It is so majestic, so beautiful. We are joined today by Rick Bassetti. He is the mayor of Redding. Sir, I mean, I, I could just sit outside and enjoy the Sacramento River all day. Oh, I, I know. And and if it if the secret gets out too yeah, much, don't tell we wouldn't be just 90,000, right. we'd probably be 250,000. I gotta ask you though, I mean, you've had quite a career, uh, both as an elected official, but also you were a professional baseball player. Yes. So for, was it six years, you played for some of the greats, Philadelphia, St. Louis, Toronto, Oakland. And I have to think you got a taste of kind of big city life. Absolutely. But yet you're born in Reading, you played in the big leagues, you came back. Yes. Yeah. Why? Family mm. and this community. Right. The people in Reading, are the most giving that you're going to find anywhere. We just had a terrible, horrific fire in a community an hour north of weed. weed. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. In one week, this community raised two hundred thousand dollars for them. One week, nothing organized. People just bringing the money and 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 turning it over to our uh, foundations here. And who else does that? Right. And I want to talk about another nonprofit, or at least a version of a nonprofit. Yeah. yeah, I guess baseball is not far from your heart at any moment. And there is a team in this area called the 45s. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the 45s, but a few years ago, before Rick Bassetti gets involved. Um, it was kind of an old man team, you uh -huh. know, guys hanging on, wanting to play. You had guys 35 years old Got playing it. on it. You had some kids playing on sure. it. They were done with high school and college and wanted to still have a, a venue to play. Um, um, but it's morphed considerably since then. Considerably. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about that because Rick Bassetti got involved and let's just say attendance is up a little bit. Just a little <laughs> bit. Uh, in 2012, the attendance at their games was 1,000 people for mm. the season. The whole season? The whole season. Oh. All right. Oh, and oh. then in 13, my first year, we, we, we grew that to 7,500. And then we made, uh, went out into the community again, the same giving right. community. Right. And we were able to... Uh, grow it to 16000 after we did about $150,000 worth of donated right. labor material for a renovation of the ballpark. And let's talk about that. It was not that long ago in May, as I understand it, you and a bunch of your friends <laughs> got together and they yeah. said, Bo, let's do something with this stadium. What was it, 26 days in May? 26 days. What we happened? got the field on May 3rd, ripped out the old backstop, excavated everything that needed to be excavated, moved a backstop up 20 feet, put down 130 yards of concrete, installed 400 stadium seats, and then... Um, the old bleachers weren't good enough? No. <laughs> New dugouts on, two, on both sides, and then we also um, um, had the uh, ability to change the configuration for people I coming see. and leaving the ballpark and it made it easier for people to get in and out of it. and it's also a different league it's not the old guys like us who are hanging on right what no. is the what is the team now i should say well this is a summer collegiate program we had players from notre dame michigan state oh, wow. university of oklahoma usc uc davis seattle university university of washington these are kids from d1 programs all over mm. the united states texas a and m and they came here we put them in with families and the families host them for like 10 weeks, 11 Tough weeks. Tough life, I'm sure, living in Reading for the summer Summertime. with the Sacramento River behind you. Oh, and you know what those Midwest boys love more than anything? Whiskey Town Lake. Oh, I can imagine. Because if you're in the Midwest mm -hmm. and you go to a lake, it's brown right. or green. Right. right. And they get out there to Whiskey Town and they got visibility of 35 feet and they're going, Coach, you could see fish when you were swimming. <laughs> right, I'm right, going, right, yeah, that's right. It's nice to see the bottom when you jump in. Clearly. <laughs> and so the program, you take these players and it's, I hate to use the word developmental, but at a certain that's level, that's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're bringing them to the next level. I have to ask you, I mean, it's got to be extra special for you because this is your home. Did you not play for Shasta College? I did. Yeah. I played for Shasta College. And so you were drafted out of Shasta College mm -hmm. and went to the big leagues. I got to think you see yourself at some of these young kids. Well, I, I really identify with them a lot. Yes. Um, and nothing would please me more. We had one of our boys signed with an independent team Fantastic. at the end of our season. Okay. Getting there. We have some kids who might get drafted in the next year or two. We've had, I think in the course of the years of the 45s, we've had 42 players go on to professional careers. Wow. I want to ask you about the fans. You know, I have two daughters. They're athletic. Uh, we go to soccer games. They're soccer players. We go to baseball games. 
There's something about being at a sporting event with your kid. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's hard to kind of <clears throat> describe or quantify or qualify. What is it? It's memories. Yeah. It's creating that family, that experience. They get there. And I just received a fan letter. Okay. All right. I opened it this from morning. From your days in the <laughs> 70s? Or days. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're kidding. From the 70s. I still get like three or four fan letters. From a, a man, because what happened was in 79, and he recanted the story of when I was playing center field in Comiskey. Right. And his mom and aunt brought him as a 10-year-old to the Come game. Come on. And he's going, and we were yelling really loud your last name. And you turned around and you waved to us. Come on. And then you came back in between innings and gave us a ball. My mom flirted with you the whole game. I love and it. And you, you kept right, flirting back, flirting back, at back a level. with her. Yeah. And he says, both my mom and my aunt are gone now. Uh -huh. But I still have those memories. Yeah, it, it is a stunning connection that can be made between the kid the player and can really be transformative on so many different levels and it's funny you mentioned 79 because for me so i grew up in los angeles the dodgers are still steve garvey ron say <laughs> davy yeah. lopes i mean jaeger jaeger i yeah. mean and Royce. bill buckner bill Royce. buckner yeah. and i actually lived near i'm getting chills actually talking about it. i lived near a few of them and i can like remember going to their homes because yeah. they were so kind and gentle and you'll love this i have full sets of baseball cards from let me get the years right i'm going to, have to say 75 76 77 right. my dad i'm not kidding 51 52 53 wow yeah but you know what wow. my dad did i know i'm digressing but i can't <laughs> help okay. it yeah. it's all right he, 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 he taped the cards oh. into, you know, a, yeah. a, a, like a notebook. And so there's tape stains on know. there. But uh, that's all right. Yeah, it's okay. The value is it coming from your dad. Exactly. Yeah. So let's talk about the future, though, of the 45s. Yeah. Where do the 45s go from here? Because obviously you're on a roll. Yeah. Well, we want to continue to expand the ballpark. Right. Uh, this year we're raising up the bleachers to get better quality of seats there. Um, I see three, five years down the road, we're going to have 1,500 stadium seats in there. Our average crowds are going to be in that 1,000 to 1,200 a night. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll branch out. We'll start doing summer concerts. Excellent. Uh, the That's backstop, a great community builder. The backstop is designed. Mm -hmm. We'll be dropping the nets, put the people in the stands, set the stage on pitcher's mound, load the people up in there, put out seats on the, on the infield portion of it, and do a start at 8 o'clock. You're done at 10 o'clock at night. We still run the concessions. It's all part of the the. Uh, right. the Money regeneration, yeah, okay. right? But it's interesting, if I may interrupt, <clears throat> you've chosen to keep the 45s a nonprofit. Yes, sir. Why? Uh, so we can give back to the community what they're giving us. You know, you want to see the look on some of these kids' faces when they look in and they see 500 people in the stands. Mm -hmm. Most of these college kids, even some of from the biggest programs, don't see crowds like that. And they come there and they're looking, they're going, Coach, this right. is so cool. Well, we want to give back coaching, to our community. By the way? Uh, I a coached bit? this year. That's fantastic. And was a general manager. Yeah. It was a lot. Yeah. Um, I'm bringing in a young coach next year right. to be the head coach because it's not just about developing the players. We also need to develop the coaches and help them yeah. with their careers. I don't need help with my career. Yeah. You're good. <laughs> you know? yeah, I'm you're okay. Good. Yeah. I can share with the coach. We have three other former big leaguers here in town that come and help. How is that possible? You know, I mean, we love Reading, but come on. I mean, well, how many Greg times? Greg like... pitched like nine years in the big right. leagues. John Strohmeyer had five years in the big leagues. Bill Plummer has 49 years in organized baseball, and he'll retire this year. But he's a catcher. He managed the Seattle Mariners one year. He was Johnny Bench's backup catcher. Is it something about Reading um, actually, <laughs> that, that grows or, or actually, attracts big leaguers? Actually, we talk about him from Anderson and Central Valley. Okay, that's all because good. Because the three of, there were three of us from Anderson, two from Central Valley, Mark Parent from Anderson, Bill Plummer, myself, and Mark Parent from Anderson. Mark Parent's the bench coach for Rob Ventura for the Sox right now. I was just back in Chicago. Mark hooked us up with great seats behind home plate, and I watched Chris Sell beat uh, Scott Kazmir one to nothing. They, between them, gave up seven hits. One was the home run off of Kazmir. That was it. Game's over in two hours. You're a good man. He's Rick Bassetti. <laughs> he is the mayor of Redding, California. I'm Brad Palmer. It's, it's California edition.